Hello once again uh, everyone, my name is Dr. Nikolai Rashek from Mero Genomics and this is going to be my another quick update about the latest information I was able to dig up, scientific information on the new mRNA vaccines. So the most important aspect is the fact that CDC, the American CDC, uh, published a report on the fact that it appears that vaccines do successfully stop the transmission of the virus from person to person. So in essence, the way to put it is, it stops infection in general. And that's very important because when the vaccines were originally approved for emergency use, that actually information wasn't known. It was known that it, it can reduce the symptoms of COVID-19 disease, but it was not known whether it can actually prevent infection. And this is probably one of the most authoritative studies currently that has come out on this topic so that's very important this was based on approximately between four to five thousand healthcare workers in the US in eight different geographical locations and what it was uh, the study was able to, to show that after one vaccination it already reduced the infection amongst the healthcare workers by 80% and after second vaccination it was about 90% so very important information for sure this is another good check mark for the quality of vaccines and what we're up against so that's great the only caveat is that there was not that many people who got infected so the numbers of uh, effectiveness are based on really low number of individuals uh, in comparison to who got infected versus not. So out of those four to 5,000 people, approximately 5% of them got infected. So you can see the comparison in the end was about 200 people who were infected. So those numbers are quite low, but overall it showed those are the differences between healthcare workers who were, in, who were vaccinated versus not. So very, very important data. It corroborates the information that also came out from UK and Israel. So really good news. Still, we don't know what the vaccine might be doing on a molecular level. Not that I was able to find, at least. Maybe that information exists, I just simply haven't found it. This is still my information that I really want to, want to find out and obtain. And, uh, and another, uh, another thing that I would love to find out is to see what might actually be the genetic impact of vaccination. So that should be simple study, see what, how it might affect uh, genetic expression inside liver cells, for example. I think this would be, would be really good information to have. So I'll still be, I'm sure that will come out at some point. So I'm, I'll be looking forward to that. One more thing that I can add is that also in that last month, I was listening to a couple different talks from two different vaccine experts, both of them who are pro-vaccines, but they provided interesting potential warnings about vaccination. So one, from, one of them was Dr. Gerd van der Bosch, I believe, and another one was Dale Harrison. And what Bosch was mentioning was the fact that potentially it might be dangerous that we're vaccinating during the pandemic because we might allow creation of new variants as a consequence of that because the immunity, effective immunity might not be reached fast enough and yet the virus is already obviously spreading amongst the population so as a consequence this might provide an environment where the virus could survive long enough to be able to mutate to new, new and more dangerous forms. So that was, uh, that was that warning. So that's actually an interesting hypothesis I haven't heard before. And the uh, other individual was mentioning, um, Harrison was mentioning that um, the vaccines should definitely help fighting the virus. And the reason why is because when you vaccinate, you vaccinate, you telling your immune body to fight against one very specific protein and that's that spike protein that you see on the images of the virus that's sticking out which means it's an antibody in of your immune system that can easily recognize the virus then and be able to attack it if you will and when you do get infected your cells will um, break the virus and release a lot of content into the blood so that means in natural infection you might create antibodies to various different components of the virus some of which actually might never be we got a gust of wind here some of which might never be um, exposed amongst the blood when reinfection occurs so your immunity from natural infection might not be as effective as that 
that is induced by the vaccine. So that was actually very interesting. However, what that individual was warning is that potentially we might, despite the fact that of course the individual's pro-vaccine was mentioning that perhaps the vaccines might not allow complete solution and the virus to solve the problem of the current pandemic and the virus might persist for a very long time but over long time it might mutate itself to much milder versions like the ones we see with common cold which are also in the coronavirus family so what and the reason why is because we might never reach proper herd immunity and um, what Harrison was mentioning is that you need multiple factors to be satisfied in order to reach herd immunity. Uh, that actually includes long-lasting immune immunity protection after vaccination. You need a very large number of population to be actually vaccinated. Uh, the vaccination has to uh, have a sterilizing impact, meaning once you're infected, the vaccine actually prevents the virus from being able to replicate itself within your cells. And also, it cannot jump back into animal reservoir and back to humans. So, and not necessarily all of these criteria can be truly satisfied with this vaccine. So as a consequence, we might not be effectively fight that virus off in one go, and we might potentially need updates of vaccinations in the future. So to some degree, there are also, we're talking about similar outcomes where there might be many different strains to come and many different vaccines required. We'll see. I'll keep updating you as the new scientific information comes out and that I can find. If you find out any information related to the molecular impacts of this vaccine, I would love to know this information and study it. So if you do find it, give me a shout and we will see you next time. Once again, this was Dr. Mikhail Rashek of Mara Genomics. And if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. There'll be more of these videos coming out because this is definitely a great topic of interest to me. Bye for now.